Hey guys, William here. Uh, today I'll be doing a troubleshooting video for the Razer Maco 2.0 system. This is a speaker set that I owned for around three years. For the first two years, the speaker worked perfectly, and uh, I think just until recently, it started developing really annoying ticking noise. So to demonstrate that, I've attached my MP3 player here, the Corn J3, and I attached it to the Maco. So here we go. So this is the ticking sound it makes, and uh, it gets louder and the frequency becomes higher when the control pad dims. So I'm going to light it on, and you see it slows. But there's one thing in common, and that's the, the MP3 player that's supposed to play in the music that feeds to the speaker it's not working because of this ticking problem so after doing some research online I found that it has to do with the capacitor Razer used uh, they were saying that the capacitor could either be A of bad quality or B it may have been soldered improperly so in this video I'm going to try to uh, remove all the existing capacitor or the capacitor that's closer to the heatsink I'm going to try to switch them out and then we're going to test the system again to see if that solves the problem. So stay tuned while I do that. Hey guys, Thanks. this is William. Uh, this is a continuation video in which I'll show you guys or give you guys some pointer on how to go about fixing the Razer 2.1 speaker. So uh, essentially, my uh, Razer Maco, as you guys have known from my last video, was making clicking noise. And uh, essentially, it would, noise would not stop. So in the end, I actually had to stop using the speaker for quite a bit until one day I found it. It's a solution in the forum, in the whirlpool.com forum. So essentially, the forum members were saying that this particular capacitor at the position C125 was causing an issue and that you can actually fix your Razer Maco speaker by replacing this faulty capacitor. So uh, the whole fix was actually very cheap, surprisingly, and uh, the capacitor itself cost around $1.25. That's for eight of them. So now I have seven spares. Uh, on top of that, I also have some soldering irons, which I bought. So I'll show you guys what they are. This is the cheapest solder iron one can po possibly get. And I got it for around, I think, 6 to $8. It actually doesn't have any temperature control so once you turn it on it is on and also i got basic soldering irons and i got a little bit clipper that's something i have already and uh, with these tools i was able to um, remove the existing capacitor and then replace it with a new one so this is the capacitor i removed and as you can see i did break the legs so what happened was um razor had Really small soldering bits when they were using when they were soldering the units and those solder parts were uh, stuck on pretty tight so in the process of removing I broke the capacitor and I had to resort to using a mechanical pencil to push out the parts so this is probably something of interest to you guys if you guys are thinking about doing a mod my basic mechanical pencil is ideal to push out the stuck parts for the leg because it's lead and therefore it doesn't really transfer that much heat so you guys can apply force onto it and it's able to push down the bits once you have melted the solder so it really really helped me um, another pointer if you guys want to go about fixing the speaker will be to actually remove the screw on this uh, thermal fin not too sure if you guys can see, but this, like, it really gives you a little bit more space to work with. So that helps. So, yeah, like, removing and replacing the capacitor, I was able to fix the problem. So, you know, for those of you guys out there with a broken Razer Maco speaker, uh, do go ahead and give this a shot before you toss it for good. Because, you know, chances are you might be just one faulty capacitor away from fixing your own 
Razer Mako. And uh, I'm going to show you guys what it sounds like after the fix. So I'm going to plug it in and we'll see how it works. So I'm not even going to bother to place everything back because it takes a while. But we'll plug in the power and we'll see how it fares. So this will be actually be the second time I turn the laser Michael on after the fix. So hopefully it doesn't die on me because that would be quite embarrassing. There it goes. Okay, so I turn it on. So the speaker's on now. Okay, I'm turning it on. And there's no clicking noise, which is a really good sign. But now I'm gonna play a music. So I'll just move it to my other screen. Here. So it works perfectly. I'm gonna turn the thing off right now. I'm gonna turn it back on. The issue was that it had clicking noise at the startup. So let's see. So it's perfect. So it goes jumps straight to the music on startup. So that's perfect. So this uh, fixed they recommend it in the forum does work. It takes a little bit of uh, time if you're a uh, first time solder person like myself. But yeah, it is possible to fix the Razer Macro 2.1 by changing just one capacitor. Uh, the capacitor I changed, for those of you who are interested, was the 25 volt version. And the good thing about it is that they actually have a really detailed photo of the Razer Macro capacitors and they're actually all labeled on a forum so it really helped to differentiate the different capacitors. I was thinking about replacing all of the capacitors but it took a little bit longer than I expected to move one of the capacitors and since it did fix the problem I'm probably just going to leave these in exact as they were because there's no need to fix that and yeah I guess all in all I'm glad it worked out. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.